Hello again everybody, this is Noel and this is the third video in a series of videos covering the production of wedge riveted mail or chain mail. This video covers the production of overlapped rings. If I can show you there, you should be able to see that there's a an overlap in this ring. Now unfortunately this is when people start to get frightened off by uh, riveted mail because unfortunately as far as I'm aware there is no tool out there that will allow you to make these rings. If you know otherwise I would certainly like to hear about that there's a good chance you will have to either make a tool or modify an existing tool in my case I have modified an existing tool and that is this in this inexpensive um, 200 millimeter bolt cutter and if I draw your attention to the working end of this tool you will notice that I have drilled a hole out of the cutting section here and it is that hole that allows us to make these rings because if I show you, if I bring this coil up against it you'll notice there that the hole allows me to skip the first revolution and cut the second skip the third revolution cut the fourth and so on all the way along the length of the coil so that's basically how we make the rings okay but how do we make the hole in this tool well in an ideal world we would have a drill press that's a big industrial uh, drill that would be clamped to a bench. Now, unfortunately, most people aren't going to have one of those. I don't have one of those. So, what other ways can we go about doing this? Well, one way would be just with a hand drill. Unfortunately, hand drills are a little bit unwieldy. It's difficult to do something um, on this kind of scale with a hand uh, drill. So one good option would be to use a hobby dr uh, drill such as a Dremel. Um, Dremels are very expensive. Um, you can get a reasonably priced hobby drill for around £20 and they normally come packed with an assortment of grinding bits and it's very, it's, it's very easy to use a hobby drill to just grind that hole out of the cutting section. The only difficult part is making sure that um, you have enough blade at the front to cut the length of wire you intend to use. So because I use 1.2 millimeter wires, there is roughly 1.2 millimeter worth of uh, blade at the front of this. Now, if I can draw your attention back to these rings, how much of an overlap you decide on is entirely up to you. Some people will favor a short overlap, others a longer overlap. I myself prefer a longer overlap. One other issue uh, we need to talk about here is the problem of these overlaps coming apart or becoming misaligned. Uh, this is very easily done because as we're cutting these coils, it's, uh, we are applying force onto the coil and it's very easy for wire to move out of position 
and that that's going to make life very difficult for us. We need these rings to be um, nicely aligned. Uh, so one thing we can do is um, <clears throat> grab our mandrel. We can put our, our uh, cut ring back onto the mandrel and then using a uh, pair of pliers such as a needle nose pair of pliers we can just uh, gently pinch al along the length of these rings uh, just to make sure that there's no alignment problem and we can also pinch them this way just to make sure that there's no space it's a bit difficult to do this with the camera in front of me but if there is any kind of um, problem with the alignment then when we go to beating these rings on the anvil there's a good chance they're not going to form correctly okay so because I like to flatten my rings down um, I would normally beat each ring up to eight times um, it's really in your best interest to make sure that these rings are aligned properly otherwise you're gonna waste an, an awful lot of energy it's really gonna uh, sap your morale and you're probably gonna give up okay so Definitely, after you've cut your rings, don't make any assumptions. Don't assume that everything's perfectly aligned, okay? Um, be because there are a number of factors here that can cause alignment problems. Certainly, the the force being applied onto them as we're cutting them, that's definitely one way of causing an alignment problem. Another way uh, this might happen is due to something called spring back uh, metals have elastic qualities in their composition um, you know they they can be quite springy um, and that springiness can sometimes cause wire to want to revert back to their original shape and this is when you start getting um, gaps forming in between the overlap uh, alignment problems with one side of the overlap being maybe slightly higher or lower than the other uh, another reason it might happen uh, <clears throat> although this is less likely is uh, as a result of something called metal creep um, this is when temperature fluctuations cause wires to um, move uh, presumably this is because uh, wire can shrink or expand depending on the temperature so I would keep I would uh, keep the rings away from radiators uh, anything that might be hot uh, keep them away from uh, windows just in case it's very cold out there and that causes the rings to um, contract one other point I would like to make about these rings is that some people will cut their overlaps the exact same for each and every ring that's a personal preference I myself do not do that Instead, I make slight variations from one ring to the next. And the reason I do that is because I am trying to produce, pardon me, I'm trying to produce mail that looks rugged. It looks like it has been produced in less than ideal circumstances. That's the way I like it. I want it to look authentic um, I want it to look almost like it has been made outside a straw hut a thousand years ago um, in a muddy field okay so that that's the way I like to make mail 
others will make it in a way that I feel looks very modern. Um, that's not my personal preference, okay? So you don't have to cut the rings with an identical overlap each and every time. You can mix it up a bit. That's the way I would recommend doing it, but in the end that is entirely up to you. So I think that just about covers everything we need to know about the making of these overlapped rings. Don't be scared away by having to modify this tool. It's not a big deal, okay? You don't have to be an expert to to do that, okay? You just need a little bit of patience. You need a hobby drill, ideally, um, and some grinding tools, and you should be able to grind out that hole without too, without too many problems, okay? So, thank you very much for watching. I'll try to get the next video up as soon as I can. Have a nice day, and bye-bye.